Welcome back everyone, today I go over car forward motion in Unity. And before I start anything, I assume that you already know mechanic physics. If not, start learning it today, and then come back to this video, otherwise you won't understand what I'm doing here. I put a link in the description for you to start learning mechanic physics. For a start, make a cube to represent a car. The cube is ok for now, but later on we need a real car model. Attach rigid body to the car and constraint X and Z rotation. It's very important to do this, cause our car will only have one wheel and it can fall on its sides if you don't constraint them. Set mass to 1000 kg. Now create an empty game object under the cube and position it at 0. Add wheel collider component to it and lower the center of wheel collider. You can see my configuration here and don't forget about the camera. Now we need the script. Actually you don't have to follow me and create the script. It is just for teaching purposes. The script is called box with a wheel collider and torque. We also need a wheel hit. In Unity, wheel collider represents a wheel and we can apply torque and brake to it. It also has other parameters that we will discuss. Inside update, don't look at this code for now. I will explain it later. Now, inside update, I say if I'm pressing W, then apply torque to motor torque. As a result, car starts accelerating. And make sure to set motor torque to 0 if we are not pressing W. This key is for brake torque and the code is as follows. Now let's get to Unity and set torque to 1250. And reference the wheel collider. Start the game and test things. Now if I press W we start accelerating. And with S the S car starts braking and comes to a stop. Pause the game, inside code and in fixed update I am getting wheel hit of our wheel collider. The get ground hit function is somehow similar to physics.raycast hit, but it is for wheel collider. I am printing the car speed in kilometers per hour and the rigid body that velocity that magnitude gives us the speed in meters per second. As a result, to convert it to kilometers per hour, we need to multiply it by 3.6. I also added a float called speed and inside the print function I added an acceleration field. To calculate the acceleration we need to deduct the speed of the car in the previous fixed update from the current speed of the car and divide it by time that fixed delta time. And how do we know the speed of the car in the previous update? Well, it's here. We store the current speed of the car inside the speed and then we use it in the next fixed update call. Don't skip this part easily, stop the video and think of what we did to find the acceleration. The mass of my car is 1000 kg plus the mass of the wheel that is equal to 40 kg. And to calculate the acceleration, we use the equation force equals mass times acceleration. And when we rearrange it, uh, it becomes A equals F divided by M. We know our mass, but what is our force? And what I mean by force is the force the wheel collider is applying at the contact point to the ground. Here we have to think of the relation between torque and force, cause actually we are applying motor torque to wheel collider and then it's converted to force. We know that F times D equals torque and by rewriting the equation we find that force equals torque divided by distance and our torque is 1250 Nm meters. And the distance is our wheel collider radius that is equal to 0.25 meters. So our force will be equal to 5000 newtons. Now we have the force and the mass and we can calculate the acceleration. A equals 5000 divided by 1040 kg and we get 4.8 meters per second cubed. That's what we calculated and it's what we are expecting to achieve. 
but the way we are calculating acceleration in our code is different. However, if we have set up everything correctly, they should be the same. Let's run the game and see it ourselves. And yes, we are getting our acceleration close to what we expected. I am printing other things too, but let's not focus on them now. Now I want to do something interesting here. We found car speed from its rigid body, but we can also calculate it from wheel collider RPM. RPM is the short form of revolutions per minute. If we divide this value by 60, we get the revolutions per second. Now multiply it by the circumference of the wheel, which is 2 times pi times r. This is in meters per second, so again multiply it by 3.6 to get it in kilometers per hour. Now deduct rigid body velocity from this value. Ok, now play the game and see how it goes. At first the difference is zero, but let's accelerate and check it again. We can see some differences right now and the faster we go the difference becomes greater. At some points we see that our wheels are spinning 15 km per hour faster than our car. And remember that our wheels are not slipping, that's an important note. This difference only happens when we are pressing W and the car is accelerating. And why is that? It's time to learn about tire frictions. First of all, you should know that car tires have static and kinetic friction, just like regular objects. So when I look at extreme value in forward friction, that means the static friction coefficient is 1. And we calculated that the force we are applying at the contact point is 5000 newtons. And it is less than our threshold to break the static friction and enter kinetic friction. Our static friction threshold is mass times gravity times coefficient of a static friction, which then will be equal to 98.10 newtons. So until now we understood that we are in a static friction threshold and that means there is no slipping. You are right, but car tires don't behave exactly the same like solid objects. Why? Because they are not solid. They are elastic solid, which means they can deform if force is applied to them. Here is a picture. The driver pushed the gas pedal and the car wants to start with a lot of acceleration. So it has to add a lot of force to the ground. As a result, the react force applies on the tire itself and the tire deforms. Let's get a little bit detailed. This is the picture of a solid wheel spinning. If the wheel rotates one revolution, the distance that it has traveled is equal to the circumference of the wheel. Now look at this one. This one is a tire, which is elastic solid. When it is applying force to the ground, it gets squeezed. As a result, it travels less than its circumference. And remember that we still have a static friction here, which means the contact point of the tire is not moving relative to the ground until the wheel rotates and that point of the tire detaches from the ground. All that we learned till now are for static friction which means that the force is not exceeding static friction threshold. And we found that our static friction threshold for this car is 98.10 newtons. Now, if we apply more torque to our wheel that exceeds this value, our tire starts slipping on the ground, and the contact point is no longer steady relative to the ground. Consider that we want to apply 12,000 newtons. To find the torque, multiply 12,000 by 0.25, which equals to 3,000 newton meters. If the car tires don't start spinning, we get 11.5 meters per second squared acceleration. But we know that 12,000 newtons is more than our static friction, so we enter the kinetic friction which is less than static friction and after all it means that we get less acceleration and it doesn't matter how much torque you apply to the wheel after that the wheel starts spinning because the wheel can only apply a maximum amount of force based on its kinetic friction let's hit play and see how the car acts and that's right we are getting lower acceleration and the wheels are slipping 
I don't calculate acceleration now cause there are some problems with wheel collider that I will explain in future videos. However, you can see the acceleration here is 5.7 meters per second square, but this is wrong. It's time to find a mathematic model for what we have learned. All the time we say the tires are slipping or not. But we need an equation to tell exactly how much the tire is slipping. There are different ways to find it, but the base of them are all the same. Unity deducts the current car speed from current wheel speed, and we know that they are not the same, and then it divides the resulting value by the max of car speed and wheel speed. I mean, if the car speed is higher than wheel speed, then the value is divided by car speed and the other way around. This equation is called the slip. You can see the equation in this picture that is provided by Unity. However, in here they have used distance traveled instead of a speed, but after all they give the same result. By the way that this equation is written, we understand that we get a value between minus 1 and 1 inclusively. If the value is higher than 0 means the wheel speed is higher than car speed, and if it is less than 0 the car speed is higher than wheel speed. Values above 0 mean the wheel is slipping and values under 0 mean the wheel is skidding. Now what I said is not completely right, cause we learned that when we are accelerating and the force applied to the ground is not higher than static friction threshold, the tire gets squeezed and travels a little bit more than our car. So it means there is a low slip when we are at a static friction. This explanation is also correct when the car brakes and decelerates. In Unity, we can adjust the extremum slip. The extremum slip is the maximum amount of slip that our car tire has when it is accelerating without actually slipping. And extremum value is our static friction coefficient. Let's review this one more time. When the wheel is applying a force equal to our mass times gravity times static friction coefficient, the wheel has a slip value of extremum slip. You can access the current slip ratio from wheel hit dot forward slip. Okay, now I'm going to try a different approach. Let's say that the force we are applying is less than our static friction. And I mean much less. The static friction threshold was 9810 Newton. So I will apply 4905 Newton, which is half. And converting it to torque gives us about 1226 Newton meters. What I want you to do is to think about the slip value we will get when the car is accelerating. If your answer is zero, you are wrong, cause we know the force squeezes the tire, so we can't have zero slip ratio. And if your answer is 0.2, then again you are wrong. And why? Well, take a look at this diagram here. You can also find it in Unity Wheel Collider Docs. Unfortunately, Unity is not clear about this diagram and you can't understand much from it. And it just misguides you. I am going to explain this diagram for you. In this part, the tires are not slipping and the slip ratio is very low. The x axis is the slip ratio and the y is friction coefficient. You can see, as the tire slip reaches extremum speed, the coefficient of friction goes higher. When the slip ratio is zero, it shows the coefficient of friction is zero. But that doesn't mean there is no friction. This diagram is only representation for tire slip. So when we are applying 4905 newtons, we are actually using half of our static friction potential. We represent that by a new friction coefficient that is equal to 0.5 and is equal to our current force. We learned that the compression of our tire depends on how much force is being applied. So lower force means less deformation, as a result tire travels less than when the tire is at extremum sleep, 
but still more than the car itself. And this all comes here to give us lower sleep ratio. This sleep ratio is between zero and extremum sleep. I hope you get what I'm talking about. And remember, although I said that we are using half of our static friction, but that doesn't mean that our sleep ratio is half. This vision is not correct here, cause this chart is not linear. If it was, then we could say that. But right now, our sleep ratio could be anything. It might be 0 0.09, 0 0.1 or 0 0.11. The rules I described apply for kinetic friction and tire sleep. Let's see it. If I apply force higher than our static friction potential, the tire starts slipping. However, the kinetic friction coefficient is not constant. It changes based on the tire slip. And usually, the higher the tire slip, the lower the coefficient. You can clearly see it in this chart. The higher the torque you apply to the wheel, the faster the slip ratio reaches its maximum value. Because more torque results in more angular acceleration. But let's break this down a little bit more. Pick up an arbitrary point on the curve. At this slip ratio, the tire has a defined coefficient of kinetic friction. So it means a defined force is applied against the tire rotation. I'm going to discuss three scenarios here. The first one indicates that if the force the wheel is exerting on the ground because of its axle torque is higher than the kinetic friction force, then the tire rotation accelerates, then a slip ratio increases, and we go down this path, and the coefficient of kinetic friction becomes lower. As a result, the car applies less force to the ground and the acceleration of the car decreases. And after all, we have less control on our car. In future videos, we talk about this more. In the second scenario, the force that the tire is exerting on the ground because of its axle torque is equal to the current kinetic friction force. As a result, the wheel rotation neither increases nor decreases, because these two forces cancel each other out and the slip ratio, friction coefficient and car acceleration remain constant. For the third scenario, the force the wheel is exerting on the ground is less than the kinetic friction. So what happens? The kinetic friction overcomes the wheel torque. So the wheel decelerates, slip ratio lowers, we go to the left side of this curve and the friction increases. And at the end we reach extremum slip and maybe even lower. So our tires are no longer slipping and we are back to normal control. There is something I want to note about this curve. The tangent at extremum slip and asymptote slip is zero. I want to test the kinetic friction in unity. I can increase and decrease the current torque by up and down arounds. Let's play the game. If I increase the torque, you see that our slip ratio goes higher than 0.9. Now, if I decrease the torque, it slowly decreases until we reach slip ratios less than external sleep. I think this is a very rich video in content and there is a lot of concepts you can learn from it. And there are a lot more concepts left to learn. I apologize if I'm not making videos regularly. These videos in a lot of workout, especially this one. A lot of questions might come into your mind, so ask them in the comment section or join my Discord channel. Also, if you like my video, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications, so you won't miss future videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.